All right, this is the big announcement from NVIDIA at Gamescom. They're showing off the next iteration of DLSS. It's moving up to a 3.5 version and the introduction of something called Ray Reconstruction. So uh, let me ah, shrink out of your way here for a second. And yes, there's frame rates here. We'll talk more about that in a second. Um, but also look at the actual image quality. Look at the lighting on this far right screen. Do you notice that more of the colors in the, in the scene are bouncing around the scene? And we'll talk more about this in a bit. So the idea behind DLSS 3.5 Ray Reconstruction is to make it, uh, you know, do a better job of denoising and upscaling uh, the, the ray bounces, right? And you get more information in there. We'll talk more about that in a second. Um, but also, I do want to mention that I was happy to see that this feature is available on all RTX GPUs, although again, still of course not available to AMD and Intel users or any other GPU manufacturers. And I'll talk more about that at the end of the video because I do have thoughts about moving more and more of a game's graphics pipeline into an exclusive uh, to a specific GPU branded um, thing. Anyway, but, but let's talk about what this is first and uh, what this is saying. So, you know, there's different features that are all being labeled as DLSS now which, uh, you know, I think with the introduction of frame generation did get a little bit confusing for people. So uh, we have DLSS Super Resolution and DLAA, uh, which are, you know, DLSS Super Resolution. So if we look at this, so if we look at the, uh, the different screens here, again, I'll make myself a ah, tiny out of your way. The far left screen here is just trying to run the game natively. This is a screenshot from Cyberpunk 2077, which is one of the games that has been announced as uh, being uh, you know, soon to uh, integrate this technology. Uh, we also have DLSS 2 Super Resolution, which runs on all RTX branded GPUs. So that's NVIDIA's 2030 and 40 series at this point. And this lowers the internal rendering resolution of the game and then upscales it uh, using the NVIDIA's DLSS Super Resolution algorithm to boost performance. Uh, we then saw the introduction of DLSS 3 frame generation, which is exclusive to NVIDIA's 40 series of GPUs. But there, and this is, gets a little bit confusing, not every DLSS, a DLL file that says DLSS 3 point whatever is exclusive to the 40 series. It's just the frame generation feature that is exclusive to the 40 series. I've talked about this a lot in other videos. Again, the idea here is that you're actually kind of interpolating frames to smooth out the motion. So the game is not actually becoming more responsive, but the emotion on the screen becomes more smooth by inserting a generated image between two uh, frames that the, um, that the game has actually generated and interacted with. Um, anyway, we talk about that more in other videos, but that's exclusive to the 40 series. But the uh, ray reconstruction that we're seeing on the right-hand side here, this one should be available on all RTX branded GPUs, so 2030 and 40 series, and that's what we are seeing in this slide. So basically DLSS uh, 3.5 will be the, the latest version of DLSS and it will have several technologies bundled in, it, bundled in it. The super resolution technology, and that will be supported on all RTX branded GPUs. The frame generation technology, which is the one that is exclusive to the 40 series GPUs, NVIDIA claims this is due to them having more advanced um, optical flow accelerated hardware. And then there is now the new ray construction, reconstruction, which is once again available on all RTX GPUs, 20, 30, and 40 series. So to clear that up, so even though I think a lot of people have it in their head that DLSS 3 only works on 40 series GPUs, it's the frame generation piece of that that only works on 40 series GPUs and DLSS 3.5 its ray reconstruction uh, will work on all RTX branded GPUs, although again, still exclusive to NVIDIA. Okay, now the other thing I wanna mention right out of, the, uh, out of the gate is that this performance boost is not actually the point. 
um, and you won't always see one. So uh, to be clear, I'm not I, I'm not actually at Gamescom, but Nvidia did provide an uh, a, a digital you know video conference call with a lot of uh, media, uh, including myself, um, to kind of explain this and give us access to this press deck. I'm recording this before the review embargo. And one of the main questions was uh, that the press was able to ask was, hey, wait a second, this shows a performance improvement, although a small one, um, is this going to in improve performance? And the answer was really that in some scenes it can, um, but in some scenes it might not. And on average, it's not really, the goal here isn't really a performance uplift. The goal of ray reconstruction is an image quality improvement. Um, also, I asked personally, can you run it at native resolution? Meaning, could you turn off um, the, uh, the super resolution feature and just use the ray reconstruction feature? And the answer was, that, in other words, could you run like DLAA with just ray re reconstruction without the super resolution? And the answer was at this time, no, because this uh, ray reconstruction happens simultaneously with the upscale that takes place. Um, so again, to be clear that in this particular screenshot, there's a performance boost, but that's not always gonna happen. But where it can happen sometimes is because what this does is it replaces the denoising that's already happening in the game. So uh, ray tracing requires denoising. Here's where uh, I'm gonna go backwards in Nvidia's press deck because I kind of started at what I thought was the most exciting bit. Um, and uh, whereas, you know, they actually start more with, um, you know, uh, how does this, uh, how does it work? But I thought you'd want to see what does it do, and then we'll see a little bit more about how is it actually getting there. So uh, here's the idea. The idea is that they are going to replace the denoising effects that are done on ray tracing uh, with an AI accelerated one that happens during the super, the you know, the upscaling process as part of their DLSS training algorithm. And so um, th that's the idea of what's happening here, is that basically that ray reconstruction will replace denoising. So uh, in this slide, they're talking about how traditionally ray tracing gets done. So the engine generates materials and geometry without lighting effects, and then rays um, uh, get cast, they bounce around, but not every point on your, you know, your vehicle, whatever that you're seeing in your screen, not everything in the image is actually going to get hit with a ray. Uh, so you have limited lighting data. Uh, so at that point, you run denoisers, uh, which uh, up till now have been hand-tuned denoisers, not AI-tuned denoisers, uh, to kind of fill in what is happening in these missing pixels in the bounce. You get an RT image, um, composited from you know these ray bounces and then after the denoising you get your composite image and then if you were then upscaling that image is then upscaled so um basically uh they're talking about then there's a couple of different denoising types uh, you know and process you know there's, there's actually a lot of different denoisers that could be happening but some of the techniques are to do it temporally, which is using multiple frames of data. And the other option, you know, another option is to do it spatially by looking at neighboring pixels. And, you know, those are uh, types of denoising that take place in the traditional pipeline. And then um, what they're basically saying here is that it doesn't always produce a perfectly accurate image at the end due to the limited data and sometimes throwing out good data in that, in that process of denoising. Uh, so up here on the top, they're showing reference screenshots of uh, you know, what the ray traced image should ideally look like. And then at the bottom here, uh, they're showing that uh, after running a traditional denoiser, there can be image quality issues. Um, you could accumulate bad pixels through the temporal data from previous frames. You can see here the ghosting on the um, on this uh, shadow of the um, the mirror there. Uh, sometimes they say that you don't have enough data to interpolate detailed lighting. So you see the the depth of the shadows along the edge of this I don't know barrel, garbage bin, whatever it is here, 
And then down here, you can see that it's it's lost after you know denoising and running at a lower resolution some of that data. And you can see here um, that some of the the reflection data is also missing um, uh, to reconstruct a detailed reflection. So. Um, Basically, they're saying that this denoising process does remove some information from the image, which then, when you upscale, means that you don't always get a, a perfectly detailed image. And then NVIDIA is claiming that their, um, that their ray reconstruction pipeline will basically replace the, uh, that denoising process with their ray reconstruction process. Uh, which they claim due to their uh, AI trained algorithm does a better job, doesn't lose as much of the useful data, and is then able to provide a better, um, a better image quality in the end. Now, I think at this point, it is very important to stress that all we're seeing right now is NVIDIA's claims. This does, has not been uh, you know, subject to third party testing at this point. Um, so I think that is uh, pretty important to note. I'm just trying to explain how the technology is is working here. Whether these, uh, you know, all all of these images and everything, or whether it has its own issues, things like that, uh, we certainly do need some third party testing. This is a news video, not a I get to test it at this point video. So just explaining what's going on here. Uh, so the idea here is that in uh, in hand-tuned denoisers, they can struggle sometimes to find patterns and 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 and, and interpret uh, interpolate all of that data. Um, however, they're saying that their DLSS should recognize patterns to intelligently generate lighting effects from multiple frames of sampled rays. So it should find. In other words, they're saying that they should find that um, that pattern that was going on there with the lighting under that and uh, it should be able to detect that and reconstruct that better than the traditional um, uh, uh, heuristics uh, and hand-tuned algorithms. Then they go on to show how that then produces a better looking um, image uh, in the end result. They give a few screenshots, for example. Uh, here they're showing this uh, the lighting coming out of the headlights here. They're saying with their ray reconstruction that you get more of a you know nicely defined uh, you know cone of light coming out from the headlights, whereas here it's more spread behind the car. You know the temporal data maybe is having some trouble with exactly where that's located. Uh, I think you can see you know, you know some other things in the image there, but that's what they're highlighting in that one. Uh, looking at reflective surfaces, they're showing. Um, you, know, you can see definitely more detail in that uh, in that reflection under the ray reconstruction process. Again, these are NVIDIA's chosen slides. And then we get to the one that I started with here uh, at the beginning of the video. So these are NVIDIA's claims of the technology. I certainly think this is interesting. I certainly think it requires some third party testing to uh, you know, verify it or see if it, you know, we find any, you know, maybe, maybe they're just highlighting the pros right now. Are there also any cons? We all, uh, so again, I, I wanna make sure this isn't just a hype video, right? Um, but I do wanna make sure you guys are aware of what's coming out, how it's claimed, the technology's claimed to work. Um, and again, the performance is not always a benefit. The idea is that it's replacing the, the other built-in denoisers. It, uh, the ray reconstruction has a performance cost and traditional denoisers have a performance cost. So um, sometimes one is more costly than the other, but it's not always gonna be a, a, a faster process to do the ray reconstruction. I did ask that of NVIDIA in the video. Uh, they do mention that this won't just be in games, like they're showing it in D5 Renderer, where you can get a, a quicker and better looking preview uh, image here. Um, now, uh, one of the big things with this technology that I think we should mention is it does not sound like you can just drop this into any game that has ray tracing and DLSS, because I, I, it sounds like... Um, in other words, they're saying that the games where this is coming this fall is Cyberpunk, which by this point we, you know, it's it's very clear that Nvidia has a relationship with those developers to use Cyberpunk as kind of a a testing ground for for you know first releases of their big new technologies. 
We also have Portal with RTX, which again is another uh, you know Nvidia kind of kind of showcase game, right? Showing off their path tracing and um, and RTX Remix and all of that. And they're also showing Alan Wake 2. So this does mean, you know, uh, Alan Wake 2 is made by the developers of Control and Control was a big ray tracing showcase when it came out. So I'm interested what we get with Alan Wake 2. Although Control, part of what was so cool about the ray tracing in that one was, you know, all the glossy surfaces and uh, Alan Wake, you know, certainly seems to be more, you know, nature oriented. <laughs> so we'll see if, uh, you'll, we'll see what, what comes of that one. Anyway, uh, so, at this point, some of my big questions about the technology are, you know, game support, right? You know, how long does this take to get into a, a reasonable number of games? Because I, I have a feeling you can't probably just drop this DLL in a in a game with ray tracing and DLSS and get the, uh, maybe have that denoising just, I, I don't know. I don't know if that, the game would just be able to intelligently stop using its own denoiser and use this one, right? You see what I'm saying? Because sometimes people just backwards just drop in the DLL file and it just works in, in other games. Um, I'm curious if that would work here. My gut feeling is it wouldn't. Um, I think it would be a little more complicated than that. Uh, so game support, but then my other thing is, while I like that this is being more supportive of, GP, of, of, of GPUs than just the 40 series, going back to the 20 and 30 series, um, I guess I just have mixed feelings in general about more and more of the graphics pipeline and rendering of a game uh, having GPU vendor exclusive uh, pathways, right? You, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so I understand, I, I, in other words, I have mixed feelings. I, I really like to see things pushed forward. To me, I think it is very cool if this provides a better looking uh, ray traced image than even DLSS off native resolution, right? If this is actually getting us more light bounces around the area to look more accurate than, than the native rendering. Um, that's cool. That's really cool. But again, um, I don't know if, if this pushes further and further, do we want a world where, um, you know, you have the, be uh, a process that, that provides the best way to, to view a game, but it all because like, like, do we want GPU vendors locking the, the whole graphics rendering pipeline into like exclusive pathways? And also what does that look like for game developers? Um, Cause you know, does this now mean that AMD and Intel have to respond with something similar? Do we have all of these different pathways for rendering games that, be, that, that become you know, exclusive to different GPU vendors? Uh, I don't know, it just feels weird. So the technology itself I find very interesting um, but the one thing that has always been off-putting about DLSS uh, is its exclusivity. And I understand it, <laughs> but that doesn't mean I like it. So anyway, I'm curious what you guys all think about this um, in the comment section. And of course, uh, we'll need to see actual you know, games up and running and third-party testing. Uh, to, uh, but, but anyway, this is today's news video. I think this is the biggest news out of Gamescom so far. We're still uh, expecting to hear big news from AMD's Radeon division. Hopefully we're hearing about the 7800 XT and 7700 XT, still not officially confirmed at this point. Uh, the other big thing would be hearing about FSR3. Um, you know, there's, there's rumors that maybe we'll hear about that. Uh, don't know if that's true, but that would be cool to see, um, you know, that moving forward as well. Uh, I think that's it for the video today. I've got to get to work. Most of you guys know I'm back on my uh, school year teaching schedule. So up early getting this one out to you guys. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.